this fires me because it's something I have done to a fairly profound level, and that is writing copy. So I'm going to give you 12 things that you have to know when you're writing copy. And not just advertising copy, but anything where you're trying to persuade somebody to do something, whether that is buy your product, buy your service, or employ you. And mm. at the end, I'm going to give you two things that are very, very important. The last one is something that people seem to forget over and over again, whether it's a DFS advertisement or a car advertisement or a job application. This one thing is always missing. And it's just one word, but that comes right at the end because it ties in with all the other stuff. Number one, talk about the customer, what the customer wants, what the customer needs, what the customer desires. Don't talk about, I'm not interested in your mission statement. I'm not interested in how wonderfully clean your production facility is or how whiz bang super or how motivated your employees are. Talk about your customer. This is so important. They don't want to hear about you. I don't want to hear about you. If I'm a customer, I want to hear about what you can do for me. I want to hear about me. We're living in a narcissistic world. Live with that concept. Talk about me. Number two, and it is number two for good reason, because you've got, on average, two seconds, two seconds to grab the customer's attention, whether it's a job application. You know, you send out, you put an ad in the paper, I'm looking for such and such a person, and you get like a hundred CVs. Boy, that's heavy going reading through. And sometimes you don't get a hundred, you'll get like 500. So you just have to go, mm, no, 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 oh, no, no, oh, media studies, no. You've got two seconds to grab their attention. And if it's a billboard or something like that, it's less than that. It's like a half a second. You've grabbed their attention with the headline. Now you've got like 10, 15 seconds to grab their attention with what it's all about. Don't make what you're trying to sell some sort of magic mystery. In film script writing terms, it's called the elevator pitch. And I want you to imagine that you're a struggling script writer. And you've got a great script. Well, you think it's a great script. You've got five copies in your pocket in the Disney building, let's just say, in, in, in Los Angeles. Got into the elevator and just at that moment, a woman from outside says, oh, please, hold, hold, hold the door, please. Thank you. And she comes in with a suitcase and so on. And she says, thank you so much. And you look at her and you say, uh, you think to yourself, wow, that's, that's Catherine Kennedy one of the most influential and important producers in the whole of Hollywood, the whole of the film industry. And if uh, I, do you work here? Uh, no, I'm just, really, I'm, I'm just um, pitching a script of all things with somebody in the building. I oh, yeah? what is it about? She says, this is your chance. You've got 10 seconds to, to say, it's about a New York hardened cop visiting his estranged wife in LA at her office Christmas party, only to discover that the building has been taken over by terrorists. And he's the only person who knows that, that what's happening and the only person who can save all those innocent employees. Wow, okay. Sounds great. You may recognize it. That's the pitch for Die Hard. That's the elevator pitch for Die Hard. It's the thing you read in the TV guide. And she then says, 
Well, that's great. I mean, listen, have you got your card there? Or maybe I, I could maybe put that in front of a few people. I have a copy. Would you like it? My name and address is on the front. Jeez, thanks. Job done. You've just pitched your movie, your script, with one of the most important people in Hollywood. Great. That is the elevator pitch. So the top line, tagline, elevator pitch. Number four, simple language, no jargon. How many times do I read something and this is the PL of the AAC of the CEO because he has to go to I E B I T D A. But I, oh God, I have lost the will to live. Most of the time, this is important. And I discovered this as a journalist, even if you're writing to people, mostly engineers, whatever, who understand this subject, the decision makers are usually not that good at knowing the technical details. So for God's sake, keep it simple, straightforward and short paragraphs, short sentences and no jargon. Be specific and factual is number five. Be specific, very specific and stick to the facts. V right? Very simple. Number six, however, sounds counterintuitive to that one, but it isn't. Touch their emotions. If you're selling a car, the car for the successful executive, right? That's touching the emotion. But then, of course, thinking back to number five, facts. Avoid gimmicks is number seven. Unless the gimmick is really relevant, deeply relevant to what you are selling or a key point of what you are selling, avoid gimmicks. Avoid being too clever by half or too funny by half. Silly gimmicks tend to get up people's noses. Now, Number eight brings me to my first book recommendation. And that's this one. Ogilvy on Advertising, a very, very important book and probably the only book you should be reading. When it comes to how to write copy, that's the Bible. Read it. I don't care about the rest. Read that one. I just opened it at random. Here's one of his advertisements. A search for the sweeter cantaloupe. And look how much text he has put underneath there. He created this idea that the loudest thing in a Rolls Royce is the ticking of the clock. And here is his advertisement. Here's a little advertisement for the Rolls Royce. Look how much copy there is underneath that advertisement. Be fulsome. Explain. If it takes 2,000 words to cover every possible aspect of your argument, use 2,000 words. If somebody's buying a car or a house or something like that, something important or subscribing to your software, and it's going to cost them like $50 a month. Well, hey, that's a lot of money. They're going to read all that before they make their decision. Number nine, be honest. If you're selling a house, the roof is bad, say so. Say the roof needs attention and we estimate it will cost £20,000 to fix it. Be honest. Better still, fix the roof first, then sell the house. Be honest up front. Otherwise, and, it, and look, if there's something wrong with your product, your service, whatever, fix it. Just fix it. And if it's a CV and you spent two years bumming around the world, say I spent two years traveling the world. 
Nothing wrong with that. Good thing to see on a CV. Sort of thing somebody like me would want to see on a CV. Be interesting is number 10. I would sum it up by saying pull them through the copy. Pull them through. Make it interesting. When I was a kid, I started reading all sorts of things, and one of which was Earl Stanley Gardner, Perry Mason, The Case of the Restless Redhead, stuff like that. And you think, oh, at least I can put this book down for a few minutes and get a breath of fresh air because, wow, it's, in, you know, it's a great story, but it pulls you through like a mad thing. But it, we're coming to the end of the chapter. I can take a break now for a few minutes. And then right at the end of the chapter, a man enters the room carrying a gun. Oh, now you have to read. Now you, now you have to find out what's going on. So be interesting at all times is the number 10. Number 11, and this is the first of the important ones that has to be there throughout, is a call to action. The thing you want them to do, the next step, click on this link, if it's a video or something, but call to action. And now comes the magic word that stops people in their tracks and makes them look at the copy they have written in a totally new light. Why? Why? Walk into a DFS sale. Look at some disgusting vinyl pseudo leather piece of junk they're selling. And some dweeb will come racing up to you and say, oh, I see you're looking at the comfy down major. Eh? Well, it's 50 percent off this week only, you know. Why? Well, it's a special office. Yes, I know you said that. But why? Now, where well, you see, we're giving 50%. Yes, I know. We covered that. Why? And of course, we know the real reason why. Because it was never priced at the full thousand. It was always 500. It was five. You know, as Ken Dodd said, who'd have thought that one day we'd live to see the end of the DFS sale? You're applying for a job with a certain company. Why? I should employ you. Why? Not why do you want a job? I, I get that. You need to eat. Yeah, OK, well, we'll go with that. But why should I employ you? I mean, what are you going to do for me? I bought the uh, uh, editing software that I'm doing these videos on, and it was remarkably cheap. I think uh, 150 quid or something like that. And they were honest. They said it's this because it's the last of it's coming to the end of this generation and we're introducing a new version. A really cheap update will become available to you. But right now you can step in at a small fraction, normally like 500 quid, but you can get in for 150 quid and then get the update because uh, we need the money and we're going to bring the update. That's a good reason. That was that told me why I should buy their software. And I bought the update for about 100, 110, something like that. So a, a good deal as far as I'm concerned, a really good deal. Now I've got the old version and the new version. Great. Now, and never forget that. Why? And when you've written your copy, your advertising copy, or you've written your letter of application or whatever it is, test it. Focus groups. Focus group with friends, family, the dog. Hey, Rufus, would you just read this and give me a 12 word summary of what you think of it? Um, and then, or anybody, off colleagues, whatever, other people in the office building, 
Test it, test it and test it again. Try different versions, tell, see which one works best. And when it goes out and you're running live, see which version or how it reacts. You can discover that just changing a few words may completely transform your conversion rate. So test, test and test again. And now my second. For those of you who are into creative writing and writing copy is to some extent creative writing, just a little tip. Every screenwriter knows this one. And again, this is something that if you're into creative writing in any way, shape or even if it's just a blog, you're just writing a blog. Save the Cat, written by Blake Snyder. Every, every Hollywood scriptwriter has re read this book. They don't admit it. It's, it's like a secret weapon. Though I did actually meet one scriptwriter, one very successful scriptwriter, writes um, the big Pixar Disney um, uh, cartoons in part. And he actually admitted to <laughs> reading this. Everybody else goes, no, I'm going to Dean Thrun, you discover. Oh, yes, oh, they have. It's a really great book. Uh, and of course, read all your favorite authors. Next time round, we'll be covering the next thing you have to cover, and that is the structure of your company.